This is the Aurora Plus ISDN butt set from Trend Communications. This uh, test set is uh, basically your entry level ISDN test set. It does ISDN and it does POTS, so you can get a, uh, you can carry one set to cover both uh, types of lines. Now I'm going to turn this on and we're going to watch it go through its um, testing for initialization on layer one, two, and three, like we just saw in the diagrams. And you'll be watching uh, to see the first thing it'll come up with here in the screen. I'll push the number one to start it. Yeah, that's good. So we push the, we enter the one. It says wait, initialize the U. And this takes a couple of seconds as it brings the line up and initializes. Layer one, active. So that means we have our synchronization. Layer two, active. That meant the TEIs were in. Then we see the ID1 and ID2. Those are the SPIDs. So now we've gone active on this line. So this line now is up and operational. And we could use the test set to now place and receive telephone calls. And we could go in and do an installation and test. Now I have another test set here that I'd like to show you. Here's the Craftec. CT100. This is a very popular instrument used by many of the telco installation people. I'm going to turn it on. Simply push the on key. It comes up and it'll start doing a self-test. Oh, error code. Well, we're going to skip the rest of the tests because we just want to show how this has some of the functions that we're looking for. Uh, comes up and you see that first off we have a light here. It's red. That's our T-Sync. That's the user side. It's not, in sync, it's not in sync with the, any equipment because I don't have anything plugged into it. I do not have U-Sync either because I have not plugged it into my line. Here I have on the bottom the little jacks where you plug in. We plug into the ISDN line here where it says line. Now this device also has an ST interface for NT1 and TE. Now the way this works is this device can be used as either an NT1 or as a piece of terminal equipment, or as a combination NT1 and terminal e and TE. So it does all three uh, functions, and that's typical for most uh, terminal equipment. Now, to use this type of equipment, you need to program it the same way you would be programming any kind of equipment that you connect to the ISDN line. You would need to program in the type of ISDN service. In this case, it's national. And you need to program in the SPIDs and the directory numbers. This is done from using the various keys here on the front of the uh, device. We have this key here that says setup. Remarkably, that is in fact for setting up. We push the setup key. We see that we can keep pushing the button and it will go through. We have auto configure, which is the way most of, these, uh, most of the time it's used. You push the star. But if you just want to push the um, button for setup. You can go through and set up uh, the SPIDs and directory numbers manually by pushing the 2 key. Here we see our switch type where we would program it in. Here we have our terminations and volume and our SPIDs. The TEI, of course, is going to be, um, going to be automatic. That's set over here called the TPI-550B. This is from uh, TTC, uh, which is a well-known company in the test equipment business. The way this device works, um, and this one's plugged in, so we'll use this one to show you the uh, layer one, layer two, and layer three tests. This device has an LCD up here, a good large LCD that's easy to read. It has multi-function keys here in the keypad where you would dial numbers, but they also serve a dual function. Down here in the corner, we have a second function key. If I can see that right here. It's the second function key. When you push the second function key, then these other keys take on additional identities. All this information is documented very well inside the cover, which I've taken off so that we can see it. We can see that the second function key one has several different areas that we can measure. We can measure the states, including layer one, layer two, and layer three. We can also measure our cause codes. Uh, we can see the TEIs, B channel, and initially, and uh, NT1, uh, protection. We have results over here for different types of error tests. Coming down a little further, we have different modes we can measure here under the utilities. We have a dual call mode where we can actually call ourselves from B channel 1 to B channel 2 and do a test. 
Another thing that they do with this set is they have a piece of central office equipment that mates to it and lets you dial into the central office. We'll do a demonstration on that in just a few minutes. Right now, let's take a look at and do a test on the line. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push the second function key, and then I'm going to push the utility key, which is right here, the pound, and then come up here and take a look inside the window, and we'll, we'll compare it to this. We've got modes is what we want to place a dual call. So there's the modes. Notice how that matches this soft key, so we push the modes. So now we have dual call. Dual call is on. I've already programmed it for on. So if I scroll the menu, I'll come to the next entry. And we have entered the second SPID already. Scroll the menu a little bit. We've entered the second directory number. And then it comes in, and look what it says. It's very, very user friendly. Do you want to call yourself Loop and Bert? Okay, so let's push this button. Yes. Next thing that comes up is enter Centrex prefix. We are not in a Centrex, so we push none. We come over here and we push the test. It's going to call itself. Here what's happened is, is it has called itself, it has answered itself, and it has started running the BERT test. Here we see the seconds the test has been in operation. Here we see our bit errors and our errored seconds. And the line is running clean. Just to be sure that your uh, detectors could recognize an error if it came back, it's a good idea to send an error and see if it registered. So we got six bit errors and one errored second. We'll do that again. You see we registered, so we were able to send the error. So after we've done this and we're established that the circuit is working and that the detectors are working, we push start clear, clears everything out. And now we want to run this test for 15 minutes. That's the standard length of time that Bellcore recommends for running the bit error rate test for customer acceptance testing on an ISDN line. TPI equipment is very well accepted by the telephone companies. And in fact, every central office I've ever been in has a TPI automated test uh, device that mates with the 550B. It's called the TPI 560B. It is the device that most telco people will dial into to test the ISDN line. It'll give you information about the line, then hang up and call you back and go into a loop mode and allow you to run a test. Why don't we try that now? Let's go over here. Now these numbers, you have to get them from the telephone company. They're not published. The way this works is, let's see, I'm going to push the off hook key. I get dial tone, and I'm going to dial the number for the local uh, TPI uh, test number in my central office. Let's listen and see what happens here. Hello, TPI automated test line. Data 64K, unrestricted service, caller is 6309800. Nine, four, one. Hang up for callback. Here we're going to push the uh, hook switch and hang up. We release the call. Now the machine will automatically call us back in about, uh, here we go, comes in. Notice it's calling in from the number I dialed. All I have to do is to answer. Goes into a loop back. Automated test line. Entering loop back. At this point, I would go over and um, operate my BERT test again, just like I did on the callback. And to do that, I would simply go into the second function keys. We've already done a BERT, so we're not going to demonstrate that again.